We continue this series called God Connects, which we're taking a look at the basic foundational beliefs for we as Lutheran Christians. And this has been inspired by a series called God Connects by Lutheran Armed Ministries. And at the conclusion of my sermon, I want to encourage you to go to the description and to watch the short video that they have as well as when you watch this short video that I'm going to share right now. And today the focus is on communion, also called the Lord's Supper. And communion, the first time it took place, was at the time of Jesus, when he met with his disciples on Monday, Thursday. And they were in the upper room, and Jesus has taken them through the Passover. And all of a sudden, he changes the Passover. You see, in the Passover, what happened was, the very first Passover, there was a lamb that was slaughtered, and the blood of the lamb put on the door frames of the homes of the people of Israel. And the angel of death passed them over. Jesus inserts himself into the Passover, basically taking on the role of that Passover lamb. That he's the one who would die for our sins. That through him, the angel of death would pass us over. He took the bread and says, this is my body. He takes the wine and says, this is my blood. And if you look at the context in which Jesus says this, we see four elements in the Lord's Supper. There is bread, there is wine, there's body, and there's blood. Now, what is this all about? And again, I want to go back to the definition of a sacrament. There are three things that define a sacrament for we as Lutheran Christians. And we've already talked about baptism, how that fulfills those three things. But now, again, the three things are, number one, instituted by Christ. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper on that very first Passover meal with his disciples. He instituted for his church. There has to be visible elements. Yes, we have the, the wine and we have the bread. There has to be the promise of forgiveness. And we see that through the words of institution, that through communion is offered the forgiveness of sins. And that does not come from the sacrament from the bread and wine itself. It comes from Jesus who works through that bread and wine. Only Jesus can bring forgiveness. And so there are, are three different views across Christianity when it comes to the Lord's Supper. There are some who take it symbolically. They only believe it's bread and wine is done in remembrance of what Jesus did. So there is no forgiveness offered there, which takes away the main focus of the sacrament to bring forgiveness, because bread and wine cannot forgive you. Then there is a Roman Catholic belief, which is called transubstantiation in which they believe that bread and wine literally turns into the body and the blood of Christ. They believe in real presence, but they believe that bread and wine is changed into the body and the blood of Christ. If I died after communion and they did an autopsy on me, they would not find some foreign substance, body and blood, inside of me. And so they do believe in real presence, but the reality is there's still bread and wine there. And somehow that bread and wine, Jesus comes to us. We call it consubstantiation. And how Jesus is present is a mystery to us. When I was in the seminary, I was struggling with this very thing. And before I was to graduate from the seminary, I had to sign off on all the doctrines of our church body. And this is what I was struggling with. How could Jesus be in that bread and wine? And I'm teaching some eighth graders in a confirmation class, and I asked them, so how do you think Jesus present in this bread and wine. And this one could raise his hand. He says, oh, that's easy. He can be wherever he wants to be. That really hit me. See, Jesus is where? He's wherever he wants to be. He's omnipresent. If he wants to be present in that bread and wine, he surely can be and he has to be because if we receive forgiveness through the bread and the wine, we have to have the presence of Christ that he is there in, with, and under that bread and wine. Jesus is present. It's a mystery to us but we take him at his word. Now, the Bible also talks about you need to take the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner. And so it talks about discerning the body and blood of Christ. And so when it comes right down to it, we have to take care to make sure people who receive the Lord's Supper understand what they're doing. Because it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, people can take their spiritual harm if they don't know what they're doing. And so what's involved with that? A person has to believe, number one, in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They have to realize they're sinners and their need for forgiveness and their inability to take away their own sin. 
they also have to recognize that Jesus is truly present in the sacraments. And how, again, it's a mystery to us. It's essential that people have this belief in the real presence of Jesus before they take the Lord's Supper. And we take it because we need forgiveness. And we take it, it's like a hug from God that Jesus is present through that bread and wine. He loves us. And this is how he touches us through that bread and wine. That every time we receive this incredible sacrament, we are receiving the presence of Christ in our lives. We are receiving the forgiveness that only he can offer. And we celebrate the fact that Jesus died and rose for us. It is an amazing gift that God gives to his church. The gift of the Lord's Supper. I want to encourage you now to watch the video um, in the description after I say the closing prayer by Lutheran Hour Ministry. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of communion, for touching us with your very presence through that bread and wine, for bringing us forgiveness we cannot bring to ourselves. This is the way you touch us with your amazing love that every time we come together as a body of believers, you are there with us. And we are part of your eternal family forever. We thank you for this family meal that we share called the Lord's Supper or Communion. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.